Hello everyone, welcome to Dinesh QL. My name is Dinesh Priyankara, Microsoft MVP and IT consultant. We always do our best to uh, make sure our analytics environment is well optimized. So we tweak settings here and there, hoping for better performance. So when I say performance, um, you know, I mean both uh, speed and the cost efficiency, okay? So sometimes we enable certain settings, um, thinking that they are the right ones to improve things. Other times um, we ignore settings, assuming that they are already handled by default, okay? So in, in most of my cases, that's how I've been, uh, you know, working with uh, environments like Microsoft Fabric, uh, Synapse, or even Databricks. So in this short video, I'm going to share a lesson I learned uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you two settings uh, I either misconfigured or completely ignored. And guess what? I ended up costing me a lot more than I expected. So I thought to uh, you know share the things I did and how I fix it. That will surely help you to uh, you know avoid making the same mistake. All right. So we are going to talk about two settings. Uh, the first setting is enable high concurrency for pipelines running multiple notebooks. This is a setting that can be seen with workspace settings, okay? And the second thing I'm going to talk about is uh, exit function. So something that we uh, add at the end of the notebook, uh, not always, but in certain cases uh, we add, okay? Right, so let me uh, show you something. So this is, a, um, you know, CU usage of one of my notebooks. Uh, so this notebook is uh, up and running in F64 environment and uh, this notebook is getting executed multiple times um, in a, uh, using multiple pipelines. Okay, so you can see a value like 1,070,000. That's the CU usage per day. All right, because this notebook is getting executed by multiple pipelines um, with multiple schedules more than 100 times for sure. All right. Um, so, uh, you know, just to make sure that uh, the performance is really good, I enable the setting, okay, the one we talk about, uh, high concurrency for pipelines, running multiple notebooks. So I have enabled that setting for uh, this workspace, okay. That's the only change I have done for the workspace setting in terms of Spark setting. Um, so I notice this, so 1 million, um, you know, CU usage per day. You know that when it's come to F64, uh, we generally, uh, we should expect somewhere around 5.5 million CUs per day, okay? Uh, but you can see just one notebook consumes more than 1 million CUs per day, okay? So, um, you know, I check many things and then I realized that I have misconfigured, uh, you know, workspace settings and then the, uh, I realized that I have ignored a one key good command that has to be added to uh, my uh, my notebooks okay so i fix all these things and i ended up with a value like this okay now you can see it is 61000 per day so if you have done the same thing you might see uh, you know a cu usage value like this so it's better to know what's happening with these configurations and what sort of things you can get uh, with uh, you know something like exit function okay right uh, how do you really see these values? Um, all these values are from uh, Capacity Metrics app. Um, so if you do not know about Fabric Capacity Metrics app, just make a search. You can get it added to your uh, Fabric environment and then it can be used for monitoring. We heavily uh, use this uh, um, app for uh, seeing how my uh, capacities are being used by um, you know, everything that I've been configured in my Microsoft Fabric workspaces, okay? So that's how we we notice this and then the, we fix this, okay? So you can see, um, you know, we ended up with 61,000 earlier. It was 1 million per day, all right? Now, these are the things I notice and learn, okay? So just to make sure that, um, you know, I explain it well, I configure two workspaces. So workspace one, workspace two. With the workspace one, you can see I have not changed the default setting. For pipeline running multiple notebooks, default setting is off, okay? So I have not enabled it. And, uh, you know, I tested uh, this with uh, a one pipeline. So this pipeline has been scheduled uh, for uh, two hours, okay? Right, and it has been executed for 24, uh, so it, it has been executed 24 times, right? Uh, pipeline is uh, really a simple one. I have a notebook with a very simple code. 
uh, I'm going to show you the code I have written. It's basically create a, a sample data table and then it adds to a lake house. Okay, that's what it does. So I call that notebook and then the, I have added wait activity to the pipeline. Okay, and then I execute the same notebook again. So this is my pipeline. All right. Now, with, with my first test, this is what I notice. CU usage is 21,000. Okay, CU so usage is 21,000 and duration. Of course, it is uh, something you have to uh, uh, check, right? It is somewhere around 3,700 seconds, all right? But my main focus is this 21,000 because it's billable, right? So I did the same test again with another workspace. You can see I have enabled this setting. S uh, same pipeline, um, it's actually a different pipeline. I mean, same configuration. So I have uh, another notebook with the same code, right? It just um, you know, create a, a data set or the data frame and then uh, it saves it as a data table in a different lake house. Okay, so same uh, uh, code and then, uh, you know, wait activity for two minutes and then again, it executes the same notebook. Now see the result, C usage is 78,000. So which is really, really high. Okay, so um, you now why I enable this, I assume that, uh, you know, since Okay, first thing, this pipeline is getting executed uh, 100 times per day or more than 100 times. So, which means my notebook, okay, this notebook is getting executed 200 times per day. Um, and then the, what I really wanted was uh, just to make sure that everything uh, everything gets executed within, uh, you know, a couple of seconds or, you know, within 10, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. I cannot really remember the uh, the threshold or the value I was looking for but basically I wanted to make sure that this gets executed as quickly as possible all right so I enable this assuming that it will reduce the time it takes for starting the spark session for uh, the notebooks so once this is started okay if you have enabled this setting my second uh, uh, activity or sorry third activity in my pipeline which is the same notebook can simply consume the resources that have been created for uh, first notebook executions that's the expectation so uh, when pipeline executes third activity which is uh, this okay it does not wait it can simply continue with the session that have been already started for the first notebook execution that was the expectation um, so all I wanted was to uh, make sure it gets executed quickly, but I did not expect, um, you know, this CU usage. You can see just for two hours, it is now 78,000. But in my real environment, you notice that it was somewhere around 1 million per day. All right. Okay. So that's the first setting I did. Right. Then I realized that it is not something I have to enable for this. It doesn't mean that you should not enable uh, these settings. You you can enable, but you have to always check. Okay, you have to always check and see whether um, you know it has added some values uh, to your environment. Right. Second test I did. Um, I know that generally we don't need to add exit command uh, at the uh, end of the notebook, but I added it. Okay. So that's what you see here. Um, so this notebook now has. Uh, exit command. I'm going to show you the code. Okay. Um, then I did the same test. Guess what? I ended up with 11,000 C usage, which is much more better than my previous settings. Okay. And then even the duration has gone down. Right. So then I thought that, um, you know, this is the best setting for this pipeline or this notebook. Okay. So I'm, um, uh, you know, I, I figured out that when it's come to, uh, you know, business cases like this, I should not enable this, okay? Or if I'm going to enable, I need to, you know, more and more test just to make sure it gives what I expect, okay? Uh, and then if I want, I can keep it um, on or else I should not turn it on, okay? But, um, you know, it is always better to add exit command to the notebook. But again, um, you know, you have to test, right? Um, I, I cannot simply say that, uh, it is something that has to be added for all your notebooks. Depends on the way you have uh, configured, depends on the codes you have written, depends on the business logic you have. So add it, test it and see. All right. Uh, I did the same test with Workspace 2 as well. Okay. Uh, you can see um, I end up with somewhere around 65,000. So which means the C usage has gone down. 
um, uh, but uh, you know it is not as good as the one we see with workspace 001 okay um, so I'm going to uh, show you the code I have written um, you know nothing much to show the pipeline and the notebook code okay um, and then we'll come back to this slide okay so this is my first workspace uh, that's fabric test 001 this is the workspace one okay so you can see one lake house and notebook and the pipeline don't worry about this uh, second notebook and the second pipeline okay um, let's have a look on workspace setting first so if I click on workspace setting uh, I can see multiple uh, tabs or the pages I'm going to click on spark settings so when I click on spark setting I can see a tab called high concurrency if I go for high concurrency I can see two options one is for notebooks by default it is on second one is for pipeline running multiple notebooks by default it is off uh, the first one you can keep it open um, or keep it on um, you know that's all about enabling high concurrency for example um, let's say I'm uh, you know writing some codes in my notebook okay I'm uh, you know executing some codes and if you want to use the same resources that have been allocated for my notebook okay it's not something like sharing the same session it's about uh, something like you know uh, sharing the resources that have been uh, given to me okay so if I have enabled this uh, and if, I, if, if my notebook is running with high concurrency mode you can simply join with my uh, uh, you know spark uh, environment or the spark uh, context okay and then work with it all right uh, that's uh, what we get with the first setting so we can get the uh, you know similar uh, facility with the second setting uh, that's purely for pipeline uh, so what it says is basically uh, you know when this setting is on if you have a pipeline with multiple notebooks so these notebooks can simply share the same resources so it, you know it does not need to wait to get the, uh, the session started okay that's what it says um, so with the with my first workspace i have not enabled this but uh, with my second workspace yes this has been enabled all right let me quickly show you the notebook okay so it's a very simple code uh, what i do is i create a data frame all right and then I save it as a, a data table in my attach lake house. That's all. You don't need to worry about this code. I have added this code just to make sure that it does something, right? So my first test was only with this cell, right? Um, you know, that is only with this cell. But with my second test, right? And uh, this is the code I added. Spark, uh, you know, MS Spark it is. Uh, Notebook.exit, you have to, uh, you know, pass a parameter. Uh, you can you can pass whatever you want so generally what we do is if something has to be passed from this notebook to pipeline we can simply use this uh, parameter okay that's what we do um, so with, with the second uh, test i have added exit function to my notebook that's all i have done i'll quickly show you the pipeline as well again nothing much let me open it all right you can see the notebook activity if i go to setting notebook 001 that is what i have configured nothing else okay and the weight uh, activity that is set for uh, sorry, uh, wait for uh, 120 seconds which means two minutes right and then i execute the same notebook you can see it's the same notebook all right that's all i have configured uh, and then i have scheduled it for two hours it gets executed every five minutes all right that's the uh, setting nothing much um, if I go to my uh, second workspace, you'll be seeing the same. Only thing is, uh, you know, I have enabled that setting. But let me open my second workspace and show you. Right, this is my second workspace. You can see it has, uh, you know, same number of fabric items. If I go to workspace setting, spark setting, high concurrency, you can see uh, pipeline running multiple notebooks is enabled. All right. Uh, if I quickly show you the capacity capacity metrics app, uh, this basically shows you with exit function. Okay. Uh, so the second record, right? Um, uh, you can see notebook 001 CU usage is eleven thousand. Okay, that's with the first workspace. Okay. Uh, first record notebook 002. That's with the second workspace. You can see CU usage is sixty five thousand. All right. Um, so if I go to uh, 23rd I can see the first setting without the exit function 
So let's see, it is getting loaded. And uh, you can see uh, the third, uh, third row in this uh, grid. You can see it is uh, somewhere around 21,000. Okay, uh, that is without the exit function, right? Uh, first workspace. And the first record that is workspace two with the setting enable, right? And without the exit function, that is 78,000. Right? So this is what we have uh, seen with uh, these two uh, different workspaces. All right, that's all. Um, so you notice what has happened with workspace one and what, what has happened with workspace two. So whether you're going to enable pipeline running multiple notebooks uh, or not, it's up to you. If you are going to enable, make sure you test it. I'm sure that you will find uh, in a, uh, you know, the value of this setting, right? Uh, but with this case, I didn't see, right? But you you will, uh, you know, you might have a different environment. You might have different set of uh, notebook executions in your pipelines. So in that case, this setting might help you to speed up uh, the, uh, you know, uh, pipeline uh, execution, okay? Uh, not only that, uh, it might help you to reduce the C usage as well. But again, check and see. Exit function. Again, I'm not going to say that it is something that has to be added to each and every notebook you are going to have in your fabric environment. Uh, it might be helpful for uh, certain, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain uh, business logics or certain execution. Okay, so add it and see whether it works well. If it is, uh, you know, not giving anything much, then you don't need to worry about it. All right. So that's all. Um, you know, if you have. Uh, any uh, thoughts on this or if you have experienced the same thing or if you know the uh, the right context or the logic behind all of these things please share i tried my best to find more details but i didn't get uh, much okay uh, so i simply shared what i know but if you know more than this uh, please add a comment uh, you know that will be helpful for me and others as well all right that's all from my end thank you very much for watching this